Hello everyone and welcome to my channel again. I have been using the DualSense with the PlayStation 5 for a while. I read some thread uh, threads on Reddit and some articles on the web about the DualSense's uh, shorter battery life um, and the span compared to its predecessor, the DualShock 4. There were also people who claimed that the DualShock 4 lasted a lot longer and that the DualSense required more time to charge as well. Now, that's two different arguments, of course. I will not spend time on the former matter. I think everyone uses their controller differently, and their battery may last variably. However, the charging times could also tell us about the health of the battery, and whether the claims about the controller's charge times are true. Also, people have been asking whether the DualSense has a fast charge feature, like a quick charge feature, I don't see it as an advertised feature anywhere in the manuals or on the website, but we'll get to it later in the video. I bought a DualSense separately from the one that was boxed in my PlayStation 5, and I went through some rounds of testing with both of them. I have the official PlayStation 5 charging station here with me. In short, my results show that the boxed version of the controller, the one that comes with the PlayStation 5, did not last as long as the retail version, it shows signs of battery aging. For example, it takes longer to charge when it's being used and when it warns about low battery faster as well. It keeps hanging around the low battery notification a lot longer as well. This is perhaps the battery is not calibrated correctly or might be that it's faulty. Now, there's two versions of the controller that I have with me. The one that you see in front of you right now is the box version. I know that the label is a bit different. I'm not sure what else is different, but everything else from the buttons to the cosmetic stuff feels the same. The following tests show the boxed and retail versions being charged in a time lapse using the PlayStation 5 charging station and the PS5 front USB. All tests have uh, had the controllers drained to 0%, like they're dead, and then charged to 100%. Okay, so I'll let you guys see the time lapse. Although it's apparent from the video itself, but uh, the one on the top left is the retail version on the charging station. The one at the bottom left is the boxed version on the charging station. And I apologize for the angle there. I thought that I was recording at 1x optical zoom, but uh, it was recording at 2x optical zoom. The two videos on the right are being charged with the PS5 front USB. The one on top right is the retail version and the one on the bottom right is the box version. The recording is happening in real time at 120 fps. One of the videos got moved while recording but it gets fixed and um, I assure you that it did not disturb the charging itself. All right, the retail version finished charging earlier on the charging station. Both controllers took approximately the same amount of time to charge from the front USB of the PS5. Although, that doesn't say much about the charging station. Does it work better in the long run, the sole charging? I think it does. We'll talk more about it later. Hmm, this is odd. This is what made me think that the controller that shipped with the PS5 has a faulty or aged battery. I've actually looked at the manual for the charging station and it mentions that the DualSense charging station should take approximately 3 hours to charge controller from 0 to 100%. So 3 hours is an expected time for the DualSense to charge from the charging station. Apart from that, I did perform another test while I was at it. I've used my laptop with DS4 Windows uh, to charge the DualSense. I should mention that my laptop has a feature that allows fast charging devices from USB 3 or USB Type-C ports. A word of caution though, the DualSense probably has an on-device circuit to limit the current flow 
using a fast charging adapter or cable that's not officially compatible can ruin the battery. So if you try this, you've been warned and I take no responsibility for it. And as you can see, this is a significant jump from the testing that I've done with the charging station and the PS5 front USB. Apart from that, there is one other thing that stood out. The old controller, or let's say the box version of the controller that came with the PlayStation 5, showed 0% when I started charging it with DS4 Windows, but at some point during the test, it stopped, stopped showing progress. And after an hour and 20 minute mark, showed that it just finished charging. Although on average, both controllers took the same amount of time to finish charging around 1 hour 20 minute mark. Well, there you have it. Here's what I've concluded from this test. Both controllers took the same amount of time to charge on average using any of the three methods. The fastest being the laptop, then the PS5 front USB, and then the charging station. Box DualSense controllers with the PS5 might have a faulty patch where the battery is faulty, or maybe it's just mine. With so many compl people complaining about uh, their DualSense controllers that they don't last long or they take ages to charge, this might be a real problem. The dual sets can be fast charged if you're using DS4 Windows or any other method, but since it's up to the controller itself to draw the current, a fast charger might just work. But I do not recommend it. Stick to the charging station or the PS5 itself. Thanks for watching. Let me know your findings in the comments below.